Good morning, Bananimators. Welcome to Styles Effects Time Thing. Styles Rumble Effects Time Thing. It's been a hot minute. I don't remember how intros work. I want to talk a little bit about 2D effects, getting started in it. And over the last little minute, I made this reference document, which you can find on my Twitter page or in the link below. I'll link it in the description. And it just has lots of people on Twitter who do special effects, Vimeo videos, ArtStation videos, websites, all the different things for effects. And then I've started adding more just general drawing stuff down here, drawing tutorials, things like that. So if you want to check that out, there is going to be, I'm going to keep adding references as I go. Hopefully I'll have a gigantic collection. It would be great. So where do you start? with effects, like what do you do on day one? Well, first of all, all drawing is really valuable if you're an effects animator because you never know what you're gonna have to draw. You could draw anything. And the better you are at drawing boots or trees or anything like that, just the stronger your drawing skills are overall. So first of all, I just recommend filling your sketchbook up as much as possible. Whenever you're bored, grab your sketchbook, do a little doodle, draw the things you can see, draw your coffee table, your dog, a vase, a bottle, it doesn't matter. Just keep drawing all the time, and really strengthen your skills. Today, I wanna to talk about the very first exercises you're going to do, like the bouncing ball. If you're gonna be a traditional animator, you wanna start the bouncing ball. It's also really good here. You could do the typical ball bounce like this, where it bounces across the screen. That's just going to be real good for teaching you timing, you got your high up here and you got some sort of slow out as it goes. Maybe it's slowest here, you get your bounce here. But just practicing your timing and spacing like this with the bouncing ball is going to work wonders for you just as it will for any other kind of animator. Also, just having your ball do some stuff, go around in space like this. Now these are spaced really far apart. This would go very, very fast. And just practicing doing it, you're gonna learn how fast or slow these things are going. You're gonna get a little bit more used to it. So you do this, you're like, whoa, that's way too fast. So then you decide to in between it. And while you're doing this, you're really practicing getting your volumes, staying consistent. You're gonna keep practicing your line work, all this kind of stuff. And you can think about slowing out in places. I'm gonna add another one in here, make it go a little bit slower here, a little bit slower here. Just play around with it. Practice your spacing and your timing. And don't just randomly draw them. Have a little thing, especially if you're doing something like this. You could say, okay, I'm gonna have my ball follow this track headed forward in space. So we're going to get bigger as it comes forward. It might go from this size to this size. And as it's turning, here is where we'll slow. We'll have a slow zone and then it'll zip and then a slow zone here. And we can just space things out like this send our ball along and see how that feels. See what it, the timing feels like when we get to it. Then if you're doing special effects in particular, you add a little tail to your ball. So now all of a sudden you've got an active thing, the ball, and you've got a reactive thing, the tail. How is it gonna react? If you have something coming around the corner like this, how is that tail going to react? Is it following exactly? Or is it going to overshoot a little bit? Maybe as it comes around, the tail itself will have a little bit of a swoosh. Playing with just this is going to give you so much opportunity to figure these things out without overwhelming yourself with complex subject matters. Because like Onion Skin did, if, if you haven't seen his recent videos, go check out the, the one where he tried anime splash. It's hilarious. He just panics the whole time. And then see the one where I gave him a little bit more of a, some tips on how to do the splash and how to not feel so overwhelmed and stuff. But starting with this, and I mean, you could even give it a little face and now he's a little fire friend right? This is going to be a lot less intimidating and you're not going to spend so much time trying to get the drawings right. You're going to spend the time learning the important stuff, which is the fundamentals. Speaking of the fundamentals, go check out Alan Becker tutorials on YouTube. If you put in the 12 principles of animation, you'll find his full series and any beginner should start there. And each time you're doing something with your little ball, your ball on a tail, your simple object, you could even make it a cube which is like, whoa, I gotta keep the, really manage my volumes there if I have a little Minecraft cube friend. Watch his videos and pick one thing like timing or arcs and really spend the time nailing that down and get it right. Every, like just focus fire each of those fundamentals when you have a little bit of time. And even if you only spend 20 minutes on it or half an hour and you spend 
that time really focusing on your arcs. The next time you're kind of playing around, you're going to see the arcs better. Always keep going back to those fundamentals and drilling them in. It's going to be amazing. So we have the ball. We have the ball plus tail. Next is just a line. The line is super important in special effects. Okay, so here is your line. What is your line doing? Let's just make a little story. Let's say the line is getting blown by the wind. Okay, so the wind is just blowing it. Maybe the wind starts drifting a little bit down and filling the bottom of our line here. Let's go a few more frames. And I'm not being very careful on keeping my line length consistent. You definitely should. Keep a copy of your line here on another drawing so you can always reference back to your length because I'm losing a length here, I think. Yeah, it's getting shorter. But keep focusing on keeping things even when you're practicing is a really good habit because you get better at seeing the difference. You get better at measuring with your brain. So let's say that we're going to get pinched and pulled in this direction. Our edges, our ends, might keep drifting while our front gets pulled up. And we're going to pick up speed. My, this line is getting much longer on the side. It's something I should uh, keep better track of. And then maybe this should, I think this should be more like this. So when you're doing these exercises, you really think about how these ends are going to react. And let's say it's, it's lost its pull now, so it's slowing. And these tails are going to start coming around a little bit. So let's put it on 12 frames per second. So here you can see we're just playing a little bit with the drift and then a pull. Drift and pull. Maybe the pull should be a little faster. We can take out some frames and see how that feels. So again, you're just starting with something very simple. You're not overburdening yourself with trying to draw the same thing over and over again to keep things really consistent. You should, I mean, this shrinks significantly as it gets towards the end. So keeping the line length consistent is enough of a problem because if I'm just freehanding like this, you can see that I'm losing length and I've been doing this for over a decade. So really take the time to practice keeping your lengths the same and you're gonna get better at seeing that. Keep your arcs working really well and smooth. Play with your timing a little bit. Make sure that you're slowing down in places and speeding up in places intentionally. And the more you do this stuff, the better prepared you are to do more complex stuff later. So these are the three things I would recommend for anybody who is just interested in, in starting with animation at all. Start with the ball, the ball and the tail, and just a line. And just give them a little story, have them do some stuff, and you're going to have a good time. It's just really fun. I mean, in 10 minutes, you can have something that you can play back and you can think about. Animating a full character, 10 minutes, you're not going to have very much to see. If you've got a few frames, they're probably going to be really rough frames. So, so that's it. I'm going to do a few short videos like this, just little exercises you can do to improve your traditional animation. So stay tuned. Definitely going to keep posting them. Like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do, and I'll see you in the next video, which will definitely happen.